Hello everyone. I'm Aratrika Bhomek and I welcome you all to another episode of Quotes Today on Live Law where we update you about all the important legal developments that took place today. We will begin with developments from the Supreme Court and then cover high courts and other lower courts. If you like our content, please do not forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. The Supreme Court has observed that it is not necessary to make a vermint that a managing director joint managing directors were in charge of and responsible for the conduct of the business of a company to make them accused under section 141 of the Negotiable Instruments Act 1881. The court reiterated that impleading of independent and non-executive directors of a company on the basis of a statement that they are in charge of and responsible for the conduct of the business of the company without anything more does not fulfill the requirements of section 141 of the NI Act. An unexpected issue arose today while the Supreme Court was considering for admission a batch of PILs filed against the extension given to the term of the ED director who should be the lead petitioner. A bench led by the Chief Justice of India was considering seven petitions filed challenging the extension given to the incumbent and director of the ED Sanjay Kumar Mishra. The petitioners included Congress leaders Dr Jaya Thakur, Randeep Singh, Surjewala, Trinamool Congress MP Mahua Moitra and TNT spokesperson Sakit Gokhale and a serial PIL litigant ML Sharma. The petition filed by Dr Raja Thakur was listed as the first matter. When the matters were called the bench initially passed over the matter for the appearance of the counsel on behalf of the government of India. At this juncture advocate ML Sharma whose petition was listed as the last item took objection to Thakur's petition being listed as the lead matter saying that he was the first one to file the petition. Responding to Sharma the chief justice of India said that Jaya Thakur's plea was listed as the lead petition since it was mentioned for urgent listing. Senior advocate Gopal Sankarnaren who was appearing for another petitioner submitted that PIL should not have names of parties as it becomes a competition to become the very first filing person at this point the CGI directed that the matter be posted tomorrow after asking the registry to verify the correct order of filing of the petitions The Supreme Court today suggested the union government to not interfere with the disability pension payable to a soldier who was discharged from service on disciplinary grounds due to alcohol dependency. It urged the government to carve out an exemption for the individual. A bench comprising justices D Y Chandrachur and Sudarshan Dholia noted that if the pension was not granted to the veteran by the Armed Forces Tribunal and he would have come before the apex court seeking the same the court could have shown him the door but considering the fact that he was granted pension by the tribunal it would not be in the interest of justice to interfere with the same saying this the bench urged the union to look at the human side of justice considering that any interference at this stage would be detrimental for the family members of the soldier the bench indicated that it would not be keen to reverse the order of the armed forces tribunal the tribunal had granted disability pension to the soldier which was impugned by the union government before the bench the supreme court today appointed former supreme court judge justice rv rivandran as a mediator in the ongoing family dispute between businessman lalit modi his mother bina modi and his siblings The bench of Chief Justice of India NV Ramana Justices Krishna Murari and Hema Kohli also asked the parties to maintain confidentiality during the mediation proceedings and not use social media in relation to the matter. This is the second round of mediation allowed in the matter after the failure of the previous mediation attempt. Earlier, the court had appointed former Supreme Court judges Justices Vikramajit Sen and Kurian Joseph as mediators. The Supreme Court of India today rejected a petition filed by Dr Mandati Tirupati Reddy seeking to direct the Election Commission of India to accept his nomination to the post of Vice President of India. A division bench of justices U U Lalit and S Ravinder Bhatt while rejecting the petition said that the petition is completely misconceived.
The Kerala High Court today directed the state authorities and secretary of social justice department to set up a temporary detention centers for foreign citizens who do not possess travel documents within a period of two months. Justice Zia Rahman AA further clarified that setting up of the detention centers must be done in conformity with the stipulations given by the central government. The court was adjudicating upon a plea filed by a Nigerian citizen who, despite being granted bail, was still languishing in jail owing to the non-establishment of a detention centre for foreigners. Thereafter, the petition had approached the court seeking an order directing the Foreigners Regional Registration Office to specify any detention centre other than the central prison. The Karnataka High Court has held that whether any warrant is issued, whether bailable or non-bailable, the arresting officer is required to ascertain the identity and be satisfied that the person proposed to be arrested is the same person against whom the warrant has been issued. Justice Suraj Govindaraj directed the state government to pay a compensation of rupees 5 lakhs to one Ningaraju N for wrongful arrest based on alleged confusion in his identity. Following Lieutenant Governor of Delhi's refusal to grant clearance for Delhi Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal's Singapore visit to attend the World City Summit, City's Transport Minister Kailesh Gailot has approached the High Court seeking broader guidelines for permissions required by elected constitutional functionaries to travel abroad. Gailot has argued that the requirement of political clearances from the Ministry of External Affairs for personal foreign visits of state government ministers violates the latter's right to privacy and the dignity of the constitutional office. The Madhya Pradesh High Court recently, in an application for transfer of a matrimonial case, observed that when it's the husband who has the custody of the minor children, more weightage has to be given to his convenience compared to that of the wife. The bench comprising Justice Nandita Dubey further noted that under such circumstances, the husband cannot be forced to attend proceedings at a court outside his residence in Bareilly, leaving his minor children behind. The Maharashtra government informed the Bombay High Court today that it has no objection in transferring the murder investigation of slain communist leader Govind Pansare to the Maharashtra Anti-Terrorism Squad from the state SIT. Special Public Prosecutor Ashok Mundari said that if the victims and relatives are not satisfied with the investigation, the state has no problem in transferring the investigation. While the Bombay High Court is likely to take a final call on the transfer of investigation on Wednesday, it asked the SPP to take instructions if a few officers from the SIT could be part of the ATS investigation team. A division bench of Justice Revati Mohita Dere and Justice Sharmila Deshmukh was hearing Pansari's kin's plea for transfer as nearly seven years after the 82-year-old was gunned down on his morning walk, the SIT failed to make any clinching breakthrough in the case. The Delhi High Court today resolved order in the plea moved by former Chief Minister of Haryana, Om Prakash Chautala, seeking suspension of sentence in connection with the disproportionate assets case. Chautala was convicted by City's Rouse Avenue Court on May 27 for an offence under the Prevention of Corruption Act 1988. He was sentenced to four years imprisonment. Justice Yogesh Khanna reserved the order today after hearing senior advocate N. Hariharan for Chautala who argued that he should be released during pendency of the appeal. The Delhi High Court has observed that there was no license ever issued in favour of Union Minister Smriti Irani or her daughter in connection with a restaurant named Silly Souls Cafe and Bar located in Goa in the order released today. Justice Mini Pushkarna made the observation while issuing summons to Congress leaders Jairam Ramesh, Pawan Khera and Netta D'Souza in a civil defamation suit seeking damages of Rs 2 crores filed by Irani for making allegations against her and her daughter regarding the said restaurant. The court had last week directed the Congress leaders to delete the allegations made by them during a press conference from all social media platforms. Thank you. Keep watching Courts today for more such updates.